In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture movement in toys. These are some examples of motion blur where the subject is captured moving. We'll be using long shutter speeds and continuous lights to achieve these effects in camera. I'll show you this crown sequence effect at the end. So for these photos, I have a light colored subject. So I've gone ahead and set up a black background and an LED which is flagged so light doesn't hit the background. If your subject is dark, use a light background. This LED is my continuous light source that I'll use to create the trail. On the other side, I'm going to use a loom cube with a snoot as the main light. The intensity of this light will make the subject opaque in the end. You can also use a flash, which I'll show you how to do later in this video. I've put my minifig on a bar so I can slide it back and forth across the floor. The bar won't be in frame for this shot. Another piece that will be out of frame is this marker. I've added some sticky putty to the underside so it stays put. So this is where I'm aiming to land the minifig every time. I'm going to set my focus here because this is where the minifig will be at the end of the exposure. I've framed up my minifig in its finishing position and I'm manually focusing on the minifig where it is. It's important to set your focus and leave it. Do not set this to autofocus. The main light will be on the front of the minifig, especially the face. Again, this light is what will make the subject opaque. Otherwise, the background will show through. You can see that my focus is locked and that I will land on the same spot every time because I have that marker. Try to keep your movements smooth and fluid. Any stops and jitters will show up in the streak. That's why I'm sliding the bar against a smooth surface rather than holding it in the air. I used a shutter speed of one second, which was based on the timing of the movement for this particular shot. You'll have to figure this out depending on distance and speed. You don't want your hand to show up as a flesh blur in the photo. To avoid that, I'm gonna wear a black glove. I'm also going to use a remote trigger so I don't have to touch the camera at all. Not fun with gloves on either. So, video light off and let's shoot. I hit the trigger when the minifig is at the start point. I reach the marker just a little bit before the exposure ends. Not bad, but the movement could be smoother. I see some jitters in the trail. To better demonstrate what light is doing what, I'll shoot this again, but with a flash as my main light instead of a loom cube. With a flash, you need to set your camera to rear curtain sync. That will fire the flash at the end of the exposure rather than the beginning. Similar, but the minifig is sharper and more solid. The flash froze the action at the end of the exposure and the intensity filled it in. So again, most of the streak is caused by the light from the LED on the minifig. So let's turn off the LED and see what happens. You still get streaks, but they're not nearly as prominent. But this could be useful in another situation. Here's a variation of the effect, a chrono sequence. You just need to stop and go, stop and go during the exposure. And you get this cool chrono effect. So there you have it. 
a cool in-camera motion blur effect. If you want to practice this effect, I have this up on my Discord server as a photo assignment. I'll link my Discord below. I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please like and subscribe. This is 4BricksTall. See you later.